the extreme example were fascist Italy and Nazi Germany, but most of the East European countries were to one degree or another fascist. Fascism is a rule by a political movement which draws from the people who have been downwardly mobile. So the rank and file of the stormtroopers, for instance, or the unemployed veterans, the downwardly mobile, but the officers and the leaders, for instance, in the black church, the SS, were to a large extent going not only from the entrepreneurs, but also from the residues of the German nobility. And Germany was full of principalities, barons, and so on. The name, the prefix von, in, in German names, <coughs> referred to an ancestry that was in the nobility. Uh, sometimes an impoverished nobility, but noble, noble nevertheless. And they were overrepresented in the leading groups of the Nazi party, even though, personally, Hitler came from the lower middle class of Austria. There were educated groups of the German middle class who were, who were important. Um, students, physicians were overrepresented in the Nazi party. And particularly because of their interest in eugenics and racism. And so the first experiments with human ex extermination were the, uh, the euthanasia of the, of the feeble-minded and the mentally ill in clinics that were later, later expanded and became the core, the training ground for the Nazi genocide. The important feature of this system was that it was explicitly anti-democratic. The uh, Nazi principle of leadership was the Führer principle, which is that at every scale of geography or enterprise, you have a leader. The leader makes the decisions. The leader can consult with subordinates but is responsible to the leader in the next rung up. And so uh, the title Führer, meaning leader, also was given adjectives like Reichsführer, Gauführer, Gauleiter, district leader, and so on. And so this was the structure of arbitrary decision making. The Reichstag, which was the German Congress, uh, one of its first acts was to pass a bill allowing Hitler to vote by, de to rule by decree mm -hmm. for a number of years. And so eventually the Reichstag became just a, an occasional rub rubber stamp. Now from the point of view of the entrepreneurs who supported Hitler, they got a lot of, a lot of initial benefit from this. The most important was the crushing of the communists, the socialists, the trade unions, the uh, ability to plunder the Jewish enterprises, or to buy them for a song to in, order, in order for the entrepreneurs to escape. The downside was that it gave an awful lot of arbitrary power in the hands of the rulers, a tremendous amount of corruption. So it was not enough to be a rich capitalist. You had to know the right people. There was this element of insecurity. Um, the xenopho xenophobia of Nazism uh, even interfered with their uh, international strategies, their military strategy. For instance, when the railroads were being used to transport people for the death camps, when the generals wanted it to transport resources to the front. So generally, the capitalist class regards fascism as a last resort. Nevertheless, they do want increasingly authoritarian government. And the trend, particularly in imperialist powers, is for a shift in power from the legislature to the executive. The executive power allows for a, a lot of decision making that's not subject to popular control. So the ability to use military force was granted to Bush by a docile Congress. The use of clandestine operations that violate international law, the opinions of lawyers in the Justice Department that if the president does it, it's legal. That was Nixon's description. But this is true throughout Europe as well, that the presidents are grabbing power, transferring power from elected office to international uh, European Union agencies, like the Economic Authority, an independent national bank, uh, 
World Bank, World Trade Organization. So in the press, readers were praised for ignoring the opinions of their country in order to join in the, in the Iraq war or um, in financial measures, uh, in various kinds of stimulus packages. So the shift toward domination by the executive is not simply the caprice of bad actors, but is part of the evolution of capitalist democracy in a period of challenge. And yet they're, they're afraid of it being too strong. They don't want it in a fascist direction in which people holding office can use their office to plunder fellow capitalists. So you see that the press was most indignant when they're dealing with corruption. They're most indignant about those crimes where somebody steals from their corporation, not when they steal for their corporation. So the people who awarded stock who lied to the shareholders can go to jail. The people who lie to the public uh, can sign a consent decree. I won't do it again and I'll retire and take a bonus, but I'm not admitting doing anything wrong. Or, well, I just discovered that I'd rather spend more time with my family. Mm -hmm. So you have this evolution of democracy uh, as one of the manifestations of the evolution of the economy. And, uh, the differences between parties tend to become only as great as necessary to siphon off discontent. And you'll see that social unrest is considered a terrible thing to happen. And yet we have to recognize that that's something which countries need more than anything else in some cases. 